Hi there! Elecro has sent me not one, but three development boards for review, and each of them is quite interesting. But I'd like to start with one that grabbed my attention the most, all because of one very specific feature. This is the Crow Panel HMI Advanced 5. The board comes in a sturdy acrylic case. The back cover is semi-transparent, letting you see some of what's inside. Of course, you can also order it without the case, if you plan to embed it into your own project. Right away, you'll notice the large number of connectors. That's a clear hint, this board is highly expandable. Let's begin by removing the case. It's super easy, just unscrew the four screws in the corners. Once that's done, you can lift off the acrylic parts and you are left holding a serious board, within one side almost completely taken up by the display. Now, flipping it over, what really caught my eye is the wireless module socket. And this is the exact feature that makes this board so interesting to me. Why? Because you can choose a wireless module that fits your specific needs. Here are just some of the options. An ESP32H2 module for Zigbee, Thread and Meta-based systems. An ESP32C6 if you need Wi-Fi 6. A LoRa MeshTastic module. By the way, MeshTastic firmware is officially supported. You can flash it directly via the web flasher on the MeshTastic site. Or even an NRF24. 401 for 2.4 GHz communication. The 5-inch display is a touchscreen with a resolution of 800 by 480 powered by ST7262 display driver. At the heart of the board is the ESP32-S3 with 520 KB SRAM, 8 MB PSRAM and 16 MB of flash. Right next to the main chip are the boot and reset buttons. There is also a microSD card slot and the microphone, connected via the I2S interface. Just a reminder, I2S is for audio, don't confuse it with I2C. The sound is driven by the NS4268 audio amplifier. You will also find the speaker connector and the physical volume knob for adjusting loudness. Powering the board from a battery is possible thanks to dedicated battery connector, so you are not limited by using a wall power. There are also three HY2.0 connectors, groove compatible, UART0, UART1 and I2C. There is a small buzzer on board too, and the RTC clock module with its own battery. Right next to the USB Type-C port used for power and flashing, you'll find a CH340K USB UART converter. If you're using Windows, don't forget to install the driver. Below that, there is additional UART0 in port, another important feature. The board has two switches that control different modes of operation. So if you're building a custom application, you'll want to plan which features you'll need to enable in advance. Let's screw everything back together. Out of the box, the board comes with a demo sketch that shows off the capabilities of LVGL. You can play around with buttons, explore charts, change UI colors and even calibrate the touchscreen through the start menu. Now, what kind of ready-made software is available for this panel? For starters, it supports a promising project called Tactility. It's an operation system designed for ESP32-based devices with touchscreens. You can flash it directly via the web flasher. It already comes with a few built-in apps. I haven't yet figured out how to create my own for it, and the system is still in early development, but it definitely looks promising. And as I mentioned earlier, mesh testing support is also available. All you need is a LoRa module with an antenna. Just head to the mesh testing website, find the crow panel in the web flasher and flash it. Thanks to the large screen, text input is easy and the app feels responsive. To build your own apps, you can use Arduino IDE, ESP, EDF or Platform.io. Honestly, it reminds me of the CYT board, but this one takes everything to the next level. With the ESP32S, S3 on board and tons of expansion options, 
I'm even tempted to try porting Bruce pentesting firmware onto it. This hardware can handle it. What's also worth mentioning is how much effort the manufacturer has put into providing helpful documentation and tutorials. There are guides for integrating with Home Assistant via ESP Home, setting up Square Line Studio for graphic UI development, and plenty of informative videos on YouTube. All in all, this board has huge potential. I'm sure we'll see it again on the channel. I'd love to test its LVGL capabilities more deeply and try out the Home Assistant integration. Ok, that's it for now. Please subscribe and press like. See you soon in the next video.